Policing TV, where I'm delighted to be joined by Robert Clark, who is the Commissioner of the Royal Anguilla uh, Police Service, Police Force. So, Robert, thank you so much for joining us here on Policing TV. In this recording, we're going to focus on the way in which you and your fellow commissioners across the British Overseas Territories uh, liaise with each other and with the um, uh, uh, government funded, the British support team. So tell us something about the support that you get as the commissioner of the Royal Anguilla Police Force. Okay, thank you, Bernard. Um, it's lovely to be here uh, with you today. So we are very fortunate um, to have really good working relationships through the Foreign and Commonwealth Development Office, um, uh, particularly through the law enforcement advisor for the Caribbean area, uh, Mr. Andrew Monday, uh, and then also with the recent creation of the International Police Assistance Service through the Home Office. And we are able to lean into both of those organisations um, for support that will help us drive um, long-term sustainable change uh, across the region, uh, or particularly in the short term, uh, if there is a surge which we do not have the local capacity to deal with, um, we are able to lean into um, either or both of, of those organisations for support. Uh, and I suppose the really good example uh, of that recently for me um, was we had a number of very serious incidents on the island, um, unfortunately murder and attempted murder. Uh, and the Royal Aguila Police Force was at saturation capacity uh, in relation to uh, investigative and responsive um, to the to those incidents, so I was able to lean into the uh, FCDO um, through the governor's office through Andrew, um, and we received a number of deployments to support us. We unfortunately in October had the murder of a fourteen-year-old schoolboy. Uh, and we were searching for the murder weapon. Uh, we were confident we knew where it was, um, but despite three searches, um, very extensive searches by, by us locally, um, we were not able to locate it, um, but the information was that that was still there. Um, so I, I lent into um, FCDO through Andrew, uh, he very quickly set up a meeting with the College of Policing Search Advisors. Uh, we then got the uh, MPOC uh, involved. And within two weeks, just probably under, uh, we had four specialist search advisors who came out for a week. Uh, and on day five, uh, we, with their help, recovered the firearm. Uh, that had a massive impact on community confidence on the island. Um, it showed the support that the UK can give to the overseas territories. Um, so it was very positively received. There was learning which was transferred from those um, to us. So it worked really well. Uh, and also uh, you mentioned Andrew Monday and uh, others from the Foreign Commonwealth Development uh, Office who provide that support to uh, the commissioners across the uh, 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 across the uh, Crown dependencies and overseas territories. Quite some support provided there. Uh, you've been in post relatively, a relatively short time, I think under a year or thereabouts. Yeah. And um, the Royal Angu sorry, Anguilla is a country of some, I think I'm right in saying 15,000 uh, and and a force of some 110 or thereabouts. So small uh, island in the Caribbean, relatively small uh, police force. Of course, the full wealth of challenges uh, that uh, any police force um, will experience. Um, and very few officers 
to, to provide that full range of policing support. So how do you manage? That's a very good question, Bernard, um, I have to say. Um, I, and actually, there's probably a number of strands to that. Um, there are certain challenges to, to placing on a, a small island, and you're right, it's like 35 square miles. Yeah, fifth, probably somewhere between 15, 17,000 people uh, on the island. Um, and uh, at the moment, we're currently sitting at 95. So this year, um, through budget negotiations, I have managed to uh, negotiate with the government an increase in budget that will probably bring us closer to 110, 112. Uh, we're established for about 130, so we we'll try and push on next year uh, and the year after to try and bring us to where we are. Um, there are challenges about getting um, information. Uh, having said that, there are still many people across the island who are um, willing to reach out and, and help. So that is in one strand in trying to help build, build this picture locally. Then again, through the FCDO, uh, I have three strands that, that I'm currently looking at uh, on, on the island. Uh, one is serious and organised crime. Uh, one is police corruption. Uh, and another one is the murder of a customs officer in the first week that I arrived. Uh, and if I put into some contacts for, for the viewers uh, and yourself, I think I arrived on island on the 29th, 30th of April last year. Uh, and within the first eight days, uh, there was the brutal murder of Gorman Greenaway, a customs officer outside his house, uh, and six other attempted murders. I put that into the context of 95 police officers. Um, and, you know, my previous force was Police Service of Northern Ireland, uh, you know, as a, an area coordinator. Uh, I looked after 53% of Northern Ireland. I had about 1,300 people that worked for me. Um, so when, if I'd had that level of violence back in Northern Ireland, I'd have more than 95 people just dealing with that. Never mind calls for service, never mind community policing, never mind road policing. Um, so there are definitely challenges uh, around the capacity. And that's where the FCDO and IPAS are essential to how we as commissioners deliver safer communities um, across the British overseas territories. Yes, the International Police Assistance Service, I apologise. We in the police are fantastic. Um, not as good as the army, but we're pretty good with, uh, <laughs> with the acronyms. There's no doubt about that. Um, so they, they currently sit with the Home Office uh, at the moment. Uh, and my understanding is that each government department must have an interest and an understanding of what's going on in overseas territories. So... Um, between Foreign Office and Home Office, we have the ability um, to dip back into UK government for that assistance. So across those three areas, um, I have been able to have long-term secondments of um, detective inspector, two detective, sorry, one DS, uh, detective sergeant, one detective constable, uh, an analyst, and two financial investigators. Um, and that then allows me to draw that strategic crime picture across the island and try and make the links across the territories. And I wouldn't have that ability uh, without the assistance from uh, FCDO or IPAS. You've described the uh, way in which you draw on assistance from uh overseas uh, in certain conditions. What about the ways in which you deal with the forensic support and similar? Uh, presumably you draw that from overseas as well. Um, are you liaising with your uh, commissioner colleagues from the other British overseas territories in order to get that assistance? 
Um, again, another really good good question. Um, because of size and scale, there are certain things that um, I don't have on the island forensically, um, whether it's the ability to look at telephony, um, whether it's um, other investigative strands that simply, you know, we do not have um, financial wherewithal to set that up. So I am able to reach out to other commissioners to say, can I piggyback on a provision that you already have? Um, so there is the ability to do that for me. Um, recently, um, we have rolled out Taser on the island to UK standards. Very grateful to the British Transport Police, Lucy Dorsey, uh, and the team who came out to do Train to Trainer. Um, so we now have the ability to bring that College of Policing standard training right across the other overseas territories in respect of that particular um, part of armed policing. So you can see there is, I may have something someone else wants, someone has something that I may need, but the one thing I, I will say um, about all the commissioners, and you're right, I only started in, in May last year, is the absolute willingness to assist each other in protecting our island communities uh, and being able to share the resource across the OTs. Um, and it's, I have to say, it's been um, a big pleasure. Talked about the policing challenges uh, in Anguilla, uh, the supports that you receive from uh, the um, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and uh, their team, uh, the support you've received from across the overseas territories. Let me just read to you a, a, a Google um, extract on Anguilla, uh, where Google says it's a British overseas territory in the Eastern Caribbean, comprising a small main island and several offshore islets. Its beaches range from long sandy stretches like Rendezvous Bay, overlooking neighbouring St. Martin Islands, to secluded coves, Reached many on, that would be keen uh, to take on the policing challenges there. How, what's your response to that? Oh, very good, Vern. No, look, um, it, it, you, make a, you make a really good point, and I... I um, I must start by saying, I know I've talked about some really serious crime that happened. By and large, this is a very safe Caribbean island. Extremely, extremely safe. Um, the other thing which, um, if you'll forgive me for going sort of slightly off piste um, in, in relation to this, this island, in my very humble opinion, has something that we in the UK have lost in its basic manners and politeness. The one thing I love about this island is that you will go somewhere and, you know, without being in uniform or, or whatever, uh, and someone might not even know you, but they will automatically, and young children will automatically go, morning, morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. And the thing that really reinforced that for me is I was I was back in Northern Ireland in January and why I thought it was a good idea to go back in the middle of winter. I have no idea, but I did. Um, but I, I was walking down the street and I, I did it without thinking. There was a gentleman who was walking towards me and I went morning, morning. And he looked at me, as my mother would say, as if I had two heads of like, what is wrong with you? So, yes, it's a safe place. They're really, you know, it's polite. It's a polite island, but it, it has some issues. And when I came here, you know, if I heard people talking about Death in Paradise, the program, um, that would, <laughs> so no, it's not like that. And I could see how some people might struggle when you're used to a very big support network behind you. And suddenly that's not there. So it, it, it can be a bit of a transition um, from if you've been in a big organization, uh, when you're coming to something really small, um, I can see how that could be a shock to the system for some. 
and of course not unlike you know senior positions in, in UK policing um, you are never really off duty you know and I, I find it you know, interesting um, never underestimate the respect with which commissioner or deputy commissioner or senior police officer in, in overseas territories um, is considered by the general public. Um, how, I, I've been humbled at times, Bernard, how um, people have reached through this office um, in very quiet ways to make sure that this island stays safe. Um, so that, that maybe wouldn't be unusual to senior officers back home, but uh, um, yes, it's it's different, but in a good way. Did you have any experience or knowledge of Anguilla before you became commissioner? So I've travelled the world extensively. I'd never been to the Caribbean. So you'd very considerable experience back in uh, policing in Northern Ireland and the United Kingdom, uh, and then you find yourself in a, a small island in the Caribbean with fresh set of uh, stakeholders, members of the public, uh, different culture, different community. How do you go about um, finding your feet uh, and then delivering within that quite different community? I think some things are, are really key. Um, in that um, you've been around UK policing for a long time, that you understand um, where UK policing is in 2024 and all that goes with that, which is legislatively good, but sometimes it can be legislatively, um, you know, anything perhaps. Um, The other thing about when you come here or come to somewhere, um, and I have spent probably the first six or seven months listening and learning and understanding the island and trying to be responsive to communities across the island around their concerns about building trust in the position or all in the, you know the, the position of the RAPF within the community um, in that you know someone has has raised an issue and um, I, I could tell a story about back home but I won't because it will it will take too long but what I find about policing Bernard is sometimes people or a person will give you a little test to see what you're going to do Dependent upon how you respond to that can sometimes define a professional working relationship that will have a substantial impact on the ability of an organisation to, to deliver within a community. And you know, that for me has been really, really important. Um, interestingly, the influence of... Uh, Religion across this island. It's a very religious island. Um, and I took a very conscious decision when I arrived here to visit churches at weekends. Uh, and I have to say, from a community confidence building point of view, um, I underestimated the importance of doing something like that, if I can put it like that. And then the other thing, I've, and I, you know, sort of around that professional um, legislative understanding, um, you will not be operating under the same legislation in the UK. And there is a, a steep learning curve um, to re-educate yourself when, when you come. I mean, I, we still at this time operate under the judge's rules um, and uh, sort of, they were just leaving policing in 1989 when when I joined, 
Um, but you can bring some of the skills and the knowledge um, that is in the UK to the OTs. So I know that one of my commissioners has a form of pace um, their territory. So I've reached out to them to say, so tell me what that looks like. So it's about how do we, or I as a commissioner, um, try and ensure the human rights of everyone on this island. Robert, it's been absolutely fascinating hearing about uh, your uh, first year uh, in Anguilla as the commissioner of the Royal Anguilla Police Force. Thank you so much for that. Uh, can I take this opportunity to wish you, uh, your colleagues in the Royal Anguilla Police Force and those communities that you work with all the very best in uh, the successful policing of Anguilla. And uh, thank you uh, for the time that you've given to Policing TV. Bernard, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.